Do you take regular backup of Home Assistant? And if you do, are they automated? If not, let me show you how. I've been taking backups of Home Assistant regularly ever since it failed. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those instances where a catastrophic event made sure that I take regular backups. Um, now this is a very good idea because you do want to have backups because things do go wrong, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate this and use your NAS drive uh, as a storage device because there's a really cool new feature in Home Assistant. All right, so let me show you how. So if I go into settings here and into system in version 2023.6 of Home Assistant, there is a new part of the storage uh, area of the settings, which is network storage. So you can add a, or you can mount rather, a place or a shared place, shared folder in um, on your NAS. Right, so let's do that. So we're gonna add network storage. So in here, we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call this Merlewood NAS, because that makes sense. I'm gonna use this for backup. I'm not sure exactly what difference this makes. It just says that it determines how the share is intended to be used, but it's intended as backup. The server is just my IP address, which is there. And then I'm gonna use the Samba or Windows protocol. Um, which is what it supports my NAS, my Synology NAS. So the remote share is, I'm just gonna look at my notes here, is media um, slash backup. And I'll show you why that is in just a second. Oh, sorry, H A backup, there we go. And then I have my username, which is H A backup. And then my password, which I'm just gonna copy across from here, right. Now this all correlates to my Synology NAS, which is here. And in here I have created a folder. In my media folder, there's a HA backup folder um, on this particular drive. Um, and I have created a user under this. So if I right click whoops, on this and I go to properties, and I can see permissions, I have a HA backup user which is allowed to use this particular share now you there's many ways of slicing this cheese but i like having a specific user with a specific purpose in this case so once i have that i now have my target uh, you know, directory or that i can mount in home assistant so back in here and i just have to click connect there we go as simple as that and now I have a network storage. So the main thing here is to make sure that your user has permissions to access that. And an easy way to do that is to uh, put this particular um, address into your Windows Explorer or whatever file explorer you're using. Make sure you can access that. Now you have to obviously get the right syntax for that. So on Windows, it's backslash backslash IP backslash media HA backup, which will then take me and ask me for a login and I can use my HA back in backup users credential to log in and make sure that I can access it. But now I have a target. I have somewhere I can store backups, right? So that's step one, okay? Um, I have up until now stored my backups on the uh, Raspberry Pi that I use itself, but as uh, SD cards are notorious for breaking. So I always download it and put it into a cloud storage. But now I can just put it on the NAS and I know it's going to be backed up because it's all rated, etc, etc. Much simpler. But I do want to automate it, which is step two. So let's do that. I'm going to use Node-RED because that's usually what I do. I do like Node-RED for these things because they're very, it's very visual and it's very simple to follow the logic. Okay, so I'm going to add another tab. So I'm starting to get a lot of tabs here, so maybe I have to reorganize them one day. But I'm going to add another tab at the end here, and I'm going to call this one uh, Backup, until I get a better name. But Backup for now will do. And this will, first of all, I need to trigger this. So I, up until now, I have done monthly backups, because I've done them manually, really, and I know I've copied, etc. But now, since it's going to be automated, well, why not do weekly, right? So I'm gonna inject uh, repeat 
at specific time and I'm going to do it at midday that's fine and I'm going to do it on Sunday so I'm going to untick all of these and then this will repeat every Sunday at noon and I'll just keep going um, and then after that I'm going to need um, some way of naming these backups I've always used date time um, because it's easy to see when it was done so I'm going to continue to do that so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to get a uh, change which is you can change the payload that comes out of this which we don't really have a payload so we're just going to set it you can also change the leader move it but we're just going to set the payload so that's the uh, the data that comes with in the you know in the request in the flow of this automation I'm going to set it to the where uh, to a timestamp value right and then if you're not familiar with the timestamp it's something like second since 1st of January 1970 or something. It's some long number that doesn't mean anything to anyone. So the next step, of course, is to um, format it. So in Node-RED, there is a very handy date time formatter, which is um, for this exact purpose. So I'm just going to put the payload in. So we can set this, and it's already almost pre-populated most things. So we can set it to payload. And input time zone Australia is Sydney. That is my time zone, so that's fine. And then my output format. Now the ISO 8601 is that sort of uh, 12 Jan, blah, blah, blah. Like letters and numbers and stuff. I don't want that. So I'm gonna use my own, well, not mine, but a format I always use, to be honest. And I'm just gonna copy it here. Which is, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a four digit year, two digit month, two digit date underscore hour and minutes the reason i do it that way is that it'll always sort chronologically right when you have the year month date first it'll always sort the right way so that's why i normally use that and then the output of this is going to be to the payload as well so we're going to take the payload in be the timestamp we're going to format that into this format and we're going to put it back on the payload so that now the payload of this date time formatter is what we can use for our backup all right, and the backup is pretty simple. So you just call a service. That's how neat it is. So in here, let's give it a bit more room here. Um, we're going to set, yep, there we go, the service that we're calling in here. So I'm just going to say uh, backup to Melwood. Oops, NAS. The domain is has.io. Um, so the operating system itself of Home Assistant and the service is backup full or partial I tend to do full backups storage is cheap I just like having that you know if you want to disagree go in the comments more than happy to <laughs> to be wrong about that one uh, I'm gonna use JSON because I'm gonna use the variable payload in this um, and for some reason I always have to use JSON I can't get the other J whatever it's called J expression I can't get this to work so let me just copy that in so this is what I have I have a name so I want to give the backup a name which is going to be the payload so that's our date timestamp underscore full and the location is just the name of the storage that we created it's that simple it's just that the target is that name Melwood underscore NAS all right so and that is it and then of course I have to deploy it and that's a very basic way of having uh, automated backups once a week to my local NAS so I know it's on at least two drives. Um, I could even set that NAS drive up to then be synchronized to the cloud as well and it'll all be automated in that sense which we, we all might do that later on. Um, but let's just run this so you can see what happens um, because there's one quirk which I think is a bug but I'll let you comment on that in the, in the comments. So let me just click here and you see it's gonna send the backup. So that sends the backup job to Home Assistant and then it takes roughly 10 minutes for it to finish. Um, but uh, yep, there we go. See, now it's cold and it's gone green, but it's not actually done. But once it's finished, I'm gonna come back to you so you won't have to wait for this. 
All right, so that's finished. So let's just go and have a look in Home Assistant. So if we go to settings and I go to system and then you can see backup, last backup 11 minutes ago. For some reason, it, the timing is when it started. I don't know. Um, and you can see here, it's exactly as I wanted it. 2023-06-16, which is today, and then the time, 5, well, 17.08, 5.08 p.m. underscore full. So that's exactly as I um, wanted it, and it's automated. It runs once a week on Sunday. However, I did back it up to my NAS, right? So this file here is on the NAS, and these three files here are on the Raspberry Pi. And you can't tell the difference so maybe that's good maybe that's bad i'm not sure uh, if i click on it it doesn't actually say where it is that it's on Merlewood nas so maybe there's a future improvement coming for that but here's what i think is the bug this file is on the Merlewood nas because if i go back to Merlewood nas and i go into ha backup there's a file but this file is called d5c4dc37.tar but if you take these two files and you compare the file size, they have the exact same number of bytes and they were done the same time. And if I take this file and I delete it or it'll disappear from here, or if I delete this file from the NAS, it will disappear from Home Assistant. So they are the same file. I just don't know where this file name is coming from. Uh, so if you know, I would love to know as well. Please put it in the comments. I considered renaming the file and all sorts after the fact, but I'm like, meh, they are the same file. I can see it at Home Assistant with the right file name. So I'm like, I'm good for now with that, but hopefully that's something that's gonna get fixed. It's probably just a bug fix. Um, anyway, I hope that was useful. If you like little tips like this in this video and other automation tips and networking videos, please do consider subscribing to the channel. That is how you can support me the best in the content that I create regularly. And if you have any comments, yeah, put them in down below. I love comments. I reply to all comments that warrant a reply. And, and uh, I will see you in the next video, which might just be one of my bigger videos. That's going to be quite the journey. I, I'm going to enjoy that. Anyway, I'll see you next time.